everybody, welcome back to the K2N Online Paddle School. We are back here on YouTube, and this week we're gonna go over some tips to help prevent your next hooli or flip out of the outrigger canoe or surf ski. This video is found at greater detail in our Beach Series 101 found on the K2N Online Paddle School.com. We are running a Black Friday sale right now on our annual subscription. If you'd like to sign up for a full year of coaching, check out with Black Friday as your coupon code. The annual subscription gives you 200 videos, full access for the entire year, 24 seven access to a coach to confer with, two free video reviews, and one month of individualized training programs for the water. Thank you all for supporting the website and the YouTube channel. Let's get right to it. The number one thing that you can work on to prevent future falls out of your vessel is adopting the proper mentality when approaching paddling. When your mind is tensed from the situations around you, your body will tense up. And a tense body is much more likely to capsize a vessel. Being relaxed with your mind means being relaxed with your body and you can introduce a lot of motion and your center of gravity doesn't change. By tensing every muscle in your body, now when I move a few of those muscles, my center of gravity changes tremendously. This immediately leads to falling over more often. It is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Paddlers who are scared and tensed force the boat to capsize much more often than paddlers that are relaxed and don't mind if the boat does flip over. What causes your mind to go on alert and tense up your body is a natural, instinctual response. Fear is the big component that forces the body to tense up. Unfortunately, with paddling, when we tense up these muscles, it's easy for our center of gravity to be lost. What allows your mind to be at ease is minimizing the fear associated with paddling. Understanding your environment, the full ability that your boat allows and the limitations of your current skill set along with a few other skills like bracing help build this confidence. stems from not understanding something. If you don't understand all of these ideas, your body has to tense up in an attempt to try and combat the unknown. Building confidence is building understanding of these ideas. Practice and seat time are things that contribute to building this confidence to allow your mind to be at ease and for your body to relax. In our club setting in Hernando, Florida, I tell my paddlers that you have to go through a hundred falls and remounts to truly understand the vessel and your ability to get back in it. Lacking confidence in your ability to remount a vessel causes this innate fear of not wanting to capsize. Again, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy if you are terrified of this fall because of your limitations with remounting or not understanding your ability to remount. This leads to the fall to begin with or this leads to very poor paddling mechanic by tensing up and only paddling with very small muscle groups and trying to keep your center of gravity with all your muscles tightened. This leads to arm paddling, which leads to shoulder injuries, which shortens your lifespan within the paddling world. Being loose allows you to move your whole body effortlessly and fluidly. These are all good things that stem from confidence in your vessel. Many paddlers refuse to flip and climb back into the boat. It's either outside of their upper body strength range, they find it embarrassing. Oh, if I'm a good paddler, I'm never going to flip anyways. These are all concepts that prevent people from overcoming this innate fear that they have. This now limits your progression to paddle in high wind environments, settings that have waves, or anything that becomes more challenging because of this innate fear. Having the ability to remount now allows you to go into these environments knowing that if you do hooli, you can get right back in your vessel and continue on. As you go into those conditions, it gives you an understanding. This is what 15 mile an hour winds does to the waves, to my boat, to my paddling speed, to my paddling technique. All of these ideas push back the veil of not understanding and puts that in the realm of understanding. We'll talk about bracing very briefly here. We have full video series on the website going over how to fly the AMA or using the wing blade paddle for bracing. Bracing is using the paddle blade as a defense mechanism to put the blade between you and the water. So if you take the blade away and you lean over, the first thing that hits the water is your elbow or your shoulder. 
By bracing, now the blade has to break through the tension of the water before your elbow and shoulder go through, which dramatically drops your chance of the huli. Many paddlers will argue that flying the ama and doing tricks like paddling with the ama in the air is a useless skill, and I disagree. Understanding the full limitations of your boat includes finding that balance point with having the ama up, mastering your brace, and utilizing that brace with forward strokes. builds a lot of confidence. You now understand how far you can push the canoe, how far you can push the brace stroke, and you have a clear understanding of the limitations of your gear. If you are petrified, tight muscles leaning to the left, and I can only lean left each time that I take a paddle stroke, you are bound by this fear of not understanding what your canoe really can do and what your paddle can really do to help with that bracing process. With the surf ski, there is no cool tricks like flying the ama, but still using the flat part of your wing blade to brace each time and figuring out how far you can brace and how close you can get the rail to the water. If you are in tune with your boat, you can push the rail so far that water comes in from the side of the bucket without actually falling all the way in. Knowing the full ability of your boat and how far it's going to go before it actually wants to capsize on you, now this builds that understanding of the boat and pushes back that fear. With more confidence, you can be in the boat and be relaxed. This allows your hips to move and your legs to drive and your hands to move and all of these good things that make a boat move very fast. It is no coincidence that paddlers that are comfortable with their stability also produce a tremendous amount of power. You do not see top end racers stiff and paddling. They are very loose and it looks like just another day at the park, even if they're paddling in five or six foot waves. These concepts are much easier said than done. And I totally understand that. It takes practice and it takes knowing that it is a mentality that allows you to be successful in turbulent waters and preventing those capsizes. Working on your remounts, spending time in tougher and tougher conditions, skills and drills to build confidence with your bracing. These are all the things that we're looking to to make you a more savvy racer. Don't kick the can on these ideas. There are many paddlers I've met that are years into their paddling journey. And every year, oh, this is the year I'm going to do this or do that. And now we're on year five or six and they are limited as if they were a first year paddler because they are just not spending time understanding these concepts. Paddling is such an awesome skill and it can take you to such amazing places. Don't let an arbitrary fear in your mind hold you back from those experiences. Practice where it's safe, build the confidence and let it take you all over the world. If there are any videos that you would like to see, feel free to leave a comment here, send me an email or use the live chat function on the website. Thank you all so much for checking out the video today and we'll be back next week for our next quick tip video.